documents, this should include financial institutions taking reasonable measures to understand the ownership and control structure of the customer. The important thing is to remember the spirit of legislation which requires financial institutions to review clients' business activities on an ongoing basis to try to ensure that the financial institutions catch any changes which might give rise to suspicions. Ongoing CDD includes transaction monitoring and keeping customer information up to date. Financial institutions should also be alerted to changes in strategy, nature of the business, changes in trading relationship including new geographical connections or connections to high-risk jurisdictions, substantial changes in income or in the source of income, changes in the capital structure of funding and in occasional transactions if found suspicious. Unusual complex or unusual large transactions. Ongoing CDD also requires when doubts have arisen on the veracity of previously obtained client information on identity or address, etc. In the case of other suspicions that the money laundering may have taken place or may be about to take place. Examples of customers where simplified or reduced CDD measures could apply are in the case of accounts of financial institutions where they are subject to requirements to combat money laundering and terrorist financing consistent with the FIRF recommendations and are supervised for compliance with those controls. In the case of public companies, where they are subject to regulatory disclosure requirements, case of government administrations or enterprises, in case of life insurance policies where annual premium is not more than 1000 US dollar or euro, or a single premium of not more than 2500 US dollar or euros. Also in the case of insurance policies for pension schemes, if there is no surrender clause, and the policy cannot be used as collateral. In case of pension, superannuation or similar scheme that provides retirement benefits to the employees where contributions are made by the way of deduction from their wages and the scheme rules do not permit the assignment of a member's interest under the scheme. An appropriate time to review the information available on existing customers is when a transaction of significance takes place or when there is a material change in the way that the account is operated. However, if a financial institution is aware that it lacks sufficient information about an existing high-risk customer, it should take steps to ensure that all relevant information is obtained as quickly as possible. In addition, the supervisor needs to set an appropriate target date for the completion of a CDD review and regularization of all existing accounts. In any event, an institution should take regular reviews of the customer base to establish that it has up-to-date information and a proper understanding of its account holders' identity and of their business. Where such reliance is permitted, the ultimate responsibility for customer identification and verification remains with the financial institutions relying on the third party. While third parties will be allowed to undertake some of the identification process on behalf of a reporting entity, there has been a significant change in that. Reporting entities cannot rely on an authorized person, that is a third party, to determine the veracity of reporting organization's risk-based system or control, or make risk-based decision on an financial institution's customer identification program. In other words, in each particular case where a third party is permitted to collect and verify the identity of a customer, they will be bound by specific risk-based controls of the reporting entity on whose behalf they are acting. If you use an alternate individual, that's an agent, to identify any of your clients, you will have to enter into a written agreement or arrangement with them to do so. You will have to obtain from this individual the client information that was obtained according to the agreement and arrangement. This will be only acceptable when this alternative individual identifies your client using original identification documents. As per the USA Patriot Law, financial institutions has to implement anti-money laundering programs that commensurate with risk. 
For some financial institutions, the minimum steps required by regulations will satisfy due diligence requirements. For others, basic due diligence will demand a higher level of scrutiny. Financial institutions should be required to perform enhanced due diligence for higher risk categories of customer, business relationship or transactions. Examples of higher risk categories which are derived from the Basel CDD paper may include non-resident customers, private banking, legal persons or arrangements, companies that have nominee shareholders or shares in bearer form, politically exposed person, politically exposed person where financial institutions are in a business relationship with a PAP. They should be required to conduct enhanced ongoing monitoring on that relationship. Cross-border or correspondent banking and also non-face-to-face -face business relationships or transactions. Let's now look into the higher risk area of non-face-to-face -face operations. It includes business relationship concluded over the internet or by other means such as through the post. Services and transactions over the internet including trading in securities by retail investors over the internet or other interactive computer services. Use of ATM machines, telephone banking, transmission of instructions or application via facsimile or similar means and making payment and receiving cash withdrawals as a part of electronic point of sale transaction using prepaid or reloadable value cards. As the transactions in these cases are carried out without requiring the client to be physically present at the branch, there is a tremendous opportunity for anonymity and money laundering. Another example to expand where EDD is required is where the client is a politically exposed person, a PAP. A PAP is someone who is or has exercised a prominent public function in a foreign country or a family member or close non-associate of such a person. It is required to take adequate measures to establish the source of wealth and funds of the PAP. It requires senior management's approval for taking on the PAP's account. The purpose of making such provisions for PAP is quite clearly to recognize the possibility that the persons holding political power may have or have had means of access to public funds and means of transporting them. The institutions should be aware of the heightened risk that such persons may consequently present. Anti-money laundering legal framework is increasingly becoming principles-based rather than prescriptive. Principles-based legislation provide broader obligations that must be met, but leaves the methods of meeting those obligations up to the individual. This is known as risk-based approach. This approach is based on the assumption that the businesses are best placed to know their customers, products, operating structure, and business environment. As a result, businesses are also the best place to assess the risk of their businesses being used for money laundering or tourist financing purposes. Inadequacy of CDD can result in reputational risk, that is loss of confidence in the integrity of the institution. Another type of risk is operational risk. Operational risk in the context of CDD is failure to implement proper program ineffective control procedures and failure to practice due diligence. Negative impact of this, if an institution is not able to manage its operational risks effectively, can disrupt and adversely affect the business. Legal risk is the possibility that loss with adverse judgments or contracts that can disrupt or adversely affect the operations or condition of an institution. Institution may be subject to fines, criminal liabilities, or special penalties if they do not engage in due diligence in identifying their customers and understanding their business. Other type of risk that is concentration risk mostly applies on the asset side of balance sheet. Without knowing precisely who your customers are and the relationship with other customers, it will not be possible for an institution to measure its concentration risk. We learned in this session about the global guidelines on customer due diligence as specified under the FADF and the Basel recommendations. 
Thank you for watching this. Please visit my next session on sanctions and other higher AML risk areas which will be coming out soon.